Hello everybody, John Corelli, Average Guy, with your his Average Guy Opinions. I believe this is episode 113, last one was 112, doing a two-parter on death. Um, I kind of skimmed over uh, death that I've dealt with in my life, and like I've said, I ha I've been very fortunate. Um, haven't had to deal with it a lot, haven't even had to deal with it in a secondary way a lot of times. Like, people die and I haven't had to comfort people very often and that's what I as I said and mentioned in the first part I've been doing with my friend Pete a little bit lately uh, this these past 10 days um, all you can do is try to be there for your friend that's all you can do buy him a burger and a beer that's about it and listen to him and and uh, just say hey you got support because now you're a single dad of two children um, I was mentioning my grandmother and uh, at, at the end uh, how I was lucky enough to be there for her. Um, also, uh, I wanted to add this, and this is why it's a two-parter, is um, when she was, the last few days of her death, she died May 16th, um, 2010. So it's been almost 11 years. Uh, in a, few, in a, few, a couple weeks, it'll be exactly 11 years. And uh, it was a beautiful morning. Uh, like I said earlier, she, she died, you know, right around, right, right at sunrise. And the birds were chirping, and it was a beautiful spring day, and it was a beautiful day to die, to be frank. Um, and like I said, she saved that last breath for me. I always feel that. I always feel that was for me, which is really an amazing feeling. Um, but uh, we were, <laughs> I want to say a few days before, uh, she was still, she was out of it a lot. She, you know, when they do hospice, at least 11 years ago when they did it with my grandmother, um, they took... Uh, morphine and water that's it you're basically starving the person to death in my opinion that's what it's like but you're also trying to keep them out of pain by giving them morphine water keep them hydrated until they can finally just drift off and die and uh we were watching half watching a, a, a hockey game and it was an amazing game um it was um i believe it was philadelphia and boston i'll have to check it was in 2010 but um I think Philadelphia was down three games to nothing in a seven-game playoff series. And uh, they came roaring back and forced to Game 7. And then they were down 3 nothing in this game, in Game 7, and came roaring back and won in Game 7. And it's very rarely been done in sports in general. It happens most in hockey, but I think it's only happened maybe four or five times in the history of the of the NHL where a team's down th three games and uh, comes back to win. So that was really cool. And my, my grandma, like every time I'd get up, I was hold, hold her hand the whole time. Like just tell her, you can't believe this game. And I think that was still, she had some moments where she'd wake up and maybe look at the hockey for a little bit. Um, and I go, grandma, I got to go to the bathroom. And she wasn't very lucid. And, and uh, as I would leave and let go of her hand, she would grab it. She would just grab for my hand. I'm like, I'll be right back. I promise. And so that was really nice. It was a, it was a really good experience for me. Um, we also, <laughs> this is kind of funny. My family's kind of fucked up. Every family's fucked up, but here's our version of fucked up. My grandma hated, hated the movie, the Titanic. She saw the original. That's how old she was. The one that came out in the thirties or forties with the guys at the violins, you know, playing as the boat sinks. And she went, um, <laughs> she saw the one in 97 and I wasn't there and I wish I was because I was in Cleveland at the time, I believe. And, uh, she, at the, that point was here. Like I said, she moved here in 93 and she went and saw it at the movie theater with, uh, my mom, my stepdad, and maybe my brother. And as the credits start, she stands up in the middle of the theater. It's dead silent. And she just goes, that's the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so that's not what's fucked up. What's fucked up is my mom thought it would be hilarious to play Titanic for her while she was in hospital. <laughs> like that's that's the kind of family i'm in uh yeah let's give this poor woman who's dying uh, a real uh nice uh fuck you <laughs> sweet <laughs> sorry it's great though it's so funny it's just i i love that i love that about my mom and my and our family because it's just hilarious i mean and, and i know grandma would have laughed too that's the thing it's like she probably wasn't thrilled laying there in that bed oh, this fucking movie in her head but there's nothing she can do as she's kind of drifting in and out of morphine consciousness and getting ready to die somewhere in her in her conscious brain, but <laughs> Titanic, yeah, well, that's what we do. So I wanted to get back to where I originally my original premise was how we kind of celebrate death and how odd it is. I think, like I said, I think it's very odd that we get together and drink our asses off sometimes. I mean, of course, a wake is mainly an Irish. Uh, Scottish Catholic thing of people who really celebrate alcohol. At least it seems that way. Um, I, whenever I think of Awake, I think of the scene in um, Snatch when um, 
when Brad Pitt's mom dies in the fire, those guys kill his mom, basically. And uh, he's just drunk off his ass, but violent as hell. It's like that, to me, that's like what a wake is. I know you can watch, uh, the, the, you know, like The Irishman, you have those types of movies, uh, Godfather type of movies where you get an idea of what a wake is. But I've, I've, that was the first one I've really been to. I, like I said, I haven't been around death much, so that, that one I went to last night was pretty much my first. And it was, it was, it's at a little biker bar um, on Parker Road, and and it was a Monday night, so it was pretty mild. And uh, we had maybe 10, 20 people show up, and like I said, my kids were there, and that was helpful um, for for Pete's kids, and uh, it was good. And I got to actually talk to. Uh, the younger kid, and I, I've mentioned him before, his name's Chris, and he has autism, and he is in the middle school, and will be a student of mine next year, uh, presuming everything goes the way I hope it should, and I got to actually, um, he, he couldn't take it, it was just too much for him, and so I drove him back home, and we walked around the courtyard of the apartment for a little while, and uh, he got to talk, and he does really well. A uh, very high functioning uh, autism with this guy, and so that was that was kind of rewarding. I was glad I got to be part of that and somewhat feel somewhat helpful, um, rather than just standing there and kind of sort of talking to people I don't know. Uh, I, I, that's always uncomfortable for me because like, oh, here we are, and we're brought together by somebody's death. It's kind of horrific. Um, I also think it's weird that we do food at. Um, at, at these times, I don't understand. Um, and the reason I'm laughing is that I know Americans, I, I think, and not just maybe Americans, it, I, I think it's human beings. You know, we get together with food, we celebrate with food, and it's just very odd to me, um, not only for death, but, um, oh, why was I laughing? I was laughing at something, but, oh, well, thought gone, welcome to my 53-year-old brain. But it, um, like when uh, I mentioned the, the death of my grand, my other grandmother my, on my father's side back in 97, uh, she was in New York, we were in Cleveland, and we traveled the 500 miles, my ex-wife and I. Uh, it was about a year before uh, my first son was born. And um, we get together with family members I either haven't seen in like 40 years or, or 30 years or just haven't ever met. And uh, it was kind of weird. Next thing you know, someone goes, hey, I'm going to go to the deli and get a bunch of food. And it just seems weird. It's like... This woman has just died. We're literally talking about the estate and the horrific way that she died because she, uh, she either, she somehow fell and hit her head. Now, whether she had like a stroke and hit her head and then laid, laid there for like two or three days before anyone discovered her and she was still alive or whether the stroke made her fall and hit her head, we don't know. But basically she had a stroke. Uh, she fell, um, severe, took severe trauma to her head but this is a big, strong Czechoslovakian. Well, no, I'm not I'm talking big fat. I'm talking big, like, just hands, like man hands. And just a very tough old bird. And uh, she was 91, living on her own. That shows how tough she was. And when she fell and cracked her head on, like, a desk or something, she, she survived another two or three days. And then some, finally someone's like, we got to get in there. I know she's in there. And she lived in the hospital for a while and then finally died. Um, <clears throat> but the, when I met all those people on her side of the family, it was very weird to just get food together and, and, and make sandwiches and eat. It's, I don't know why. I don't know. Not, the reason I laughed is because another place where it's weird and that this is like how my screwy brain works. Strip clubs. I can't eat at a strip club. I had wings last night to tell you the truth. I mean, a wake is different and it's a bar with food and I was hungry. I hadn't eaten. That was dinner. But it was weird for me when uh, we were eating the, in my grandma's house. But but strip clubs are weird too, right? I I don't understand why you're bringing those two things together. It's come see half naked ladies and yeah, have some prime rib while you're here. I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. <clears throat> Sorry about my throat through these two uh, episodes. I don't know what the deal is, but I I don't know a little uh, congested. Maybe like I said, the weather's changing a lot back and forth these days. It's April. It's kind of typical here in Denver. I don't have too much else to say about death, again, other than that I'm trying to avoid it. <laughs> I like we all are, just trying to live the best life we can. I'm feeling really good about life lately. That's the weird thing. Even though uh, someone close to me just died, things are going super, super good for me. Um, I almost feel guilty about it. I'm taking the summer off. I got my stimulus check finally. I saved enough money that I can take the entire summer off. I got to figure out what I'm going to do this summer besides uh, possibly writing my, my second book. I want to do some road comedy. I I, I just I'm very I feel blessed. I mean I really feel very blessed. I'm healthy, happy, and uh, 
I'm getting the next two and a half months beginning on May 27th off. There's part two of two about death and some other things. Uh, see you guys on the other side, as the old death saying goes. And uh, see you for uh, episode 114. Thanks, you guys. Bye.